Welcome to the Keto Evangelist Kitchen. I'm Brian. And I'm Carrie. And this podcast is dedicated to making things simple and easy for you in the kitchen. Carrie Brown is a classically trained, world-class chef who has a passion for creating ketogenic recipes that taste better than anything you've ever experienced. But more than that, she loves teaching people how to cook the right way. And each week on this podcast, Brian and I discuss all the ways you can create awesome keto food that is guaranteed to make you a rock star in the kitchen. If you'd like to learn more about Keto Evangelist Kitchen, you can go to ketoevangelistkitchen.com and sign up for the newsletter. In exchange for your email address, you'll get brand new recipes delivered to your inbox, ready for you to whip up in the kitchen and enjoy with your friends and family. So sit back, relax, and get ready to laugh and learn. You're about to enter the Keto Evangelist Kitchen. And hello again, every peoples. I am Brian, and she's Carrie. Hello. And this is the Keto Evangelist Kitchen. Hey, Carrie. How are hello, you? Hello, Brian. And and you are well today, I take it? I had a pedicure earlier. Oh? Now, that's the one on the feet, right? That's the one with the with, toes? With no polish. A polish-free pedicure. Uh, I'm assuming that means that your toes, like it's not normal for them to polish the heels of your feet, right? I've never... Oh no, they do. They do. They get, they get, if it's really bad, they get like a cheese grater and they like grate it off. And, and if it's not that bad, then they get a firely thing and they kind of rub it off. And yeah, so. Mm -hmm. That's way more information about, um, feet stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. you, so yes, your feet, your your heels definitely get a polishing. It well, depends on what's the how like what's the how appeal? much skin there is built up um, as to the depth of the polishing and the implement used. What, so what's the appeal of the pedicure? Is it because they massage your feet, or is it because it just you, you just you feel better afterwards? What's the appeal there? Well, I would hazard a guess. And I'm hazarding a guess because I've I, I only really started having pedicures when I moved to America because in England we, we were kind of just not into that whole thing. Did you wear sandals a lot or flip flops a lot in England? In Golanda? Yes, but okay. we we just I mean just painted toes was just never a thing when I lived there. I think it's probably moved towards that more now, but I've been gone for a while. But when I was there, it was just like almost nobody had painted toenails. And, and so it just wasn't really a thing. And I don't think I ever – maybe I had two in, in my whole time I lived in England. And then I moved here, and it's kind of what you do if you're a, a, a lady. And mm. and also, it's very, very cheap here. In you can Seattle. get a, a very cool pedicure for not a lot of money. So I started doing that. And But this was my midwinter break pedicure, which is why I had no polish. Because I like to give my my nails a breather, <laughs> so I had them take off the old polish, and then and this place is my my local place has just started doing this really cool. They have these big lumps, I mean, and they're ground to be smooth, but these big lumps of Himalayan pink salt, and they massage your lower legs, so knees down. Are they heated? Your feet. Are they heated? They heat it so it's hot. And then they put oily stuff on your legs and then they massage your legs and feet for like 20 minutes with this lump of hot pink Himalayan salt. I got to be honest with you. That sounds to me like they're seasoning you up to put you in a stew. I mean, that's what it sounds like to me. <laughs> I mean, if I was, if I, oil, salt, you know, a little but bit of. But of course, of, you know that absorbing that salt is really good and it, and it, it, it helps you relax. I mean, there's just, it, it's just awesome. You, so I went and did that and they took off the old polish and then I got a leg massage and a foot massage and my Himalayan rock salt and yeah, so just it, kind of sat there and for 45 minutes and it was lovely. It sounds like, that, like were you in a, were you like in a cast iron pot while this was going on? Cause I'm saying it sounds like they're just tenderizing you and seasoning you. I mean, I got to be no, honest with you. I was, um, I was, I felt fairly well tenderized by the time I was done. I was all kind of, you know, floppy. I'd been in this massage chair and the chair's massaging my back and this lovely lady's got Himalayan yeah, rock salt all over you're my lucky legs. To, you're and, lucky you got out alive. I mean, that's seriously, that is, that was like cannibal central right there is what that is. I'm just saying that's, uh, it, it, it was glorious. You should what, try it. What was the, sh what was the Australian thing? Uh, no, maybe it wasn't Australian. Um, um, in the seventies, it was a movie. Um, 
oh, what was it? Something is people. Um, you don't know what I'm talking about, do you? Uh, no clue. It was a it was a product that everyone. It was a movie that was made and a product that everyone loved eating. And at the very end, the twist was it was people. It was made of people, and it was a very popular movie. And I can't remember what it's called. Soylent, Soylent, or isn't it Soylent Green? Uh, yeah, Soylent Green is people. That's what it is. You have no idea what I'm talking about, do you? Absolutely none. Well, mm-hmm. you just survived it, so there you go. Um, anyway, so that was my terribly keto Himalayan pink salt pedicure, and it was awesome, and I feel very zen now. Oh, good. Then, then you won't mind me talking about how people can help us out by going to iTunes and giving a nice rating and review for the show. Or maybe you will. Maybe you're not zen anymore. Well, you take a you take a break for a second. I'll do it. Um, if you're listening and you have an iTunes account and you have iTunes on your computer because you can't do it on your phone or your iPad or your tablet of any kind, go to iTunes and please do us a favor and give us a nice rating and review because you love the show because Carrie's awesome. And we really appreciate it because Carrie's awesome. And if you keep putting Carrie's awesome, we'll read your review on the air and Carrie will say your name in her nice, thick British accent. If you ask her, oh, also, if you ask her to say it in a particular British accent, she'll do that too, because she's good with the regions too. She's good with the dialects, except for Welsh. Don't give, don't ask her to do Welsh, because she's she's right out. Tom Jones, uh, is, <laughs> stop. No offense to any any uh, Welsh folks. Tom Jones is as hey, Welsh as she gets. There's more sheep than people in Wales, okay? I know that, and Australia. There's more sheep than people in Australia. Um, Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, oi, oi. There we go. Okay, so, um, all right, so you can you can help us out by doing that. You can connect with us on social media because we are Keto Van Kitchen on Twitter and Keto Evangelist Kitchen on Instagram. Facebook, we've got a really awesome group, Keto Evangelist Kitchen. It's a Facebook group, not a page. Um, Facebook.com slash groups slash Keto Evangelist Kitchen. Carrie's there. She's always helping people because that's just how she is. She's wired to help people. That's just the way it goes. You hear her exhaling right now. Hey, let me tell you a little bit about Carrie Brown. Listen up, people. This is I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna drop some knowledge about Carrie Brown. Carrie Brown does not like it when I tell people how awesome she is because Carrie Brown doesn't like it when people are are um, honest about how awesome she is because Carrie Brown likes to just help people and she's like it's no big deal. And other people who are being helped are like, no, it's a big deal. And she's like, no, it's not a big deal. And I'm like, I'm going to tell people how big of a deal it is. And she's like, I don't even know you. Why do you keep talking to me? And I'm like, I don't know. And that's how the story goes. And I think, I think this is one of those moments where it's really, really lucky for you that you're not in Seattle and, or I'm not in Austin. Well, yeah, yeah, I think so. And um, mm-hmm. let me just say, I just want to follow up by saying, Neener, 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 you can't do anything about it. But you know what? In May, I am keeping score. <laughs> I don't know what that means. But... You're coming to Seattle in May. Uh, well, am I? You don't mm-hmm. know that. You don't know that. You don't know anything about me. Yeah, I do know that. I don't think that's true. I mm-hmm. think... Uh, I'm going to zig when you thought I was going to zag. Boom, boom. You don't know. You don't know. You're coming to Seattle in May, and I'm going to meet you, and I've got, I'm keeping score. <laughs> My wife is going to be with me, so she will know. She'll help me. No, no, she'll, she, hold she'll you know down. if I'm missing. That's all I'm saying. She will know if I'm missing. So just, just so you know. Um, hey, Carrie Brown, what are we talking about today? One of my favorite things in the whole world oh what is that hold on wait cats and pedicures we've already discussed so it's something else um i'm gonna say bacon loaf no no all right what is it lettuce no seriously lettuce seriously we're talking about lettuce Mm-hmm. Okay, now hold on. Are we lettuce? Ta- <laughs> are we, <laughs> lettuce. Are we talking about? Okay, so in 1992, there was a band that came out of Boston. The name of the band, they were like a, a, a funk band called Lettuce. Are we talking about them? No. We're actually talking about the vegetables. We're talking about green, leafy lusciousness. Oh, good grief. All right. Because lettuce is awesome. Is it? 
Is it awesome? Yes. All right. I'll have to take your word for it. What specifically are we discussing about Let Us? We're discussing the the billions of different lettuces that there are. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Stop. Stop. You're telling me that there's more than just iceberg and romaine lettuce? Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't know. To, that, what? Why is it so, then when in my so grocery when store? First, when I first moved to America, uh huh, and I, I come from England where we we you know grow a lot of stuff and there's a lot of fresh food and and I was used to exciting lettuce and then wait, wait, I moved wait, hold on, here. Hold on. Exciting lettuce. Yeah, exciting lettuce. Mm, okay. And then I moved here. And, and I, when I first was here, I was in Spokane, Washington on over on the east side of the state. And, and I very quickly realized that there was an exciting lettuce crisis, <laughs> but nobody else knew here knew that there was a crisis. They didn't just even me. Know that it was lettuce apocalypse and they didn't even know. I mean, there was just, there was iceberg and right. I'm like, but where's all the other lettuces that I like to eat? And there was nothing. There was just iceberg. And maybe that was partly because Spokane and, and that wasn't the case everywhere else, but it was, I was in Spokane for about four years. So about four, by the time I was leaving Spokane, you could find the odd crinkly, wrinkly, bicolored lettuce, maybe if you went to the right place. So, in the spirit of sharing with everybody the enormous array of exciting lettuces there are out there, um, I thought we'd talk about it for a bit. Okay, so <clears throat> the because first... iceberg is like the dullest thing ever. It is also nutritionally void, so there is actually no point in eating iceberg because you get nothing from it nutritionally, and it has no flavour. Right, so, I'm, but there's, I think there's there's a significant number of people who think that all lettuce is like iceberg. Uh, I think that there are, and I think that's probably rightly so, because it's lettuce. <laughs> I'm just saying. So I wanted to set the lettuce record straight. Okay. Because green leafy things, if you're if you're keto. And but you like to eat vegetables like I do, and I really like to eat vegetables, and I actually do much better when I'm eating vegetables. But if you're keto, um, green leafy things is where it's at. That's definitely on the keto train. Right, you're green gonna leafy things. You're gonna have a hard time finding a non-keto friendly green leafy vegetable. I mean, essentially. Green leafy vegetables typically, with certain exceptions, iceberg lettuce being one of them, are are um, high in a variety of vitamins and minerals, depending on the different kinds of, of well, lettuce that they are. But they are also very, very low in carbs and very high in water content. So they're very keto-friendly. Um, and a lot of times they are used as vehicles for fattier aspects of keto so um, they fit right in with the keto lifestyle but i want to go back to this whole idea of exciting lettuce the question is because and this is what everyone wants to know carrie brown um and by everyone i mean me what is your favorite lettuce or do you want to you want to save that to the end and no, no, no we can it? start with that okay what is your favorite lettuce I cannot believe I just uttered that phrase. Like the, I have never in my life thought I would ask someone. So, tell me the truth. What's your favorite lettuce? Don't lie, because I know the truth. Like, what's your favorite lettuce? Uh, the green one. So, what's your favorite lettuce, Carrie Brown? Butter. <laughs> There's a butter lettuce. Really? Mm -hmm. That's the thing I just showed you. What is butter lettuce? Does it actually taste like butter? No. Oh. Does it melt like butter? Well, no, it doesn't taste like butter, but it is softer. The leaves are very... It, it's They're not, velvety. It's not hard and crunchy. It is kind of velvety and soft and, and 
Mm. So it's more like butter than all the others. You just but if used... you compared it with butter, then no. But you, you know, used... it's kind of soft and gentle and very bright green and just just glorious. And I love butter lettuce. Uh, you just use the word yum to explain and describe something. I just want you to know that we're talking about exciting lettuce, and we're we're using the word yum. I'm just—is that like a French culinary term, or or am I just? I mean, Italian. <laughs> that was my that was my Italian. Pretty good, huh? <laughs> Uh, okay, so, all right, so, <laughs> uh, I got a million of them, I'm telling you. <laughs> and I have a feeling they're all coming out in the lettuce episode. <laughs> oh, they're all insane. Brian, Brian was so very excited to talk about lettuce. <laughs> I was like, what are we talking about? Lettuce. No, seriously, what are we talking about? <laughs> lettuce. No, come on, seriously, what are, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Uh, okay, so butter lettuce is your favorite, and it's got a yum yes. to it, right? Yes. So it's it's got a, so it's not just that it has a certain taste to it, but it's also got a mouth feel that's better than just what we would know, what typical Americans understand as you know basic yes. lettuce. Because romaine, which is you know the what you buy at Costco by by the ten heads, is remains good. I mean, it, it, there's some point to remain, but it's very hard and crunchy and crisp. And, and that's great for a lot of things like in your tacos, you know, without the shell. I mean, we use cheese shells or whatever we do, but, you know, you need that uh, lettuce with that kind of body and crunch to it to make it kind of work. But, but then you have instances like lettuce wraps, in my opinion, are much better when you use a butter lettuce. Because they're softer and more pliable, and they just they make very very good transporters. And that, see, <clears throat> that right there is the characteristic that draws that I'm like. That's the reason that I'm interested. Because I, lettuce in and of itself, blech, whatever. But if you're telling me there's a way that I can, I can transport make it useful. Yes, <laughs> yes, mm-hmm. yes. Uh, yes. Okay. So butter lettuce, you've described it. It's and from the look of the leaves, if, if you guys have never seen butter lettuce, it looks, um, it does not look like typical lettuce, like a head of lettuce. That's not what butter lettuce looks like. It's, um, the leaves are broader, shorter, smaller diameter, and they are, I mean, they almost look like flowery, right, in their, in their construction. And, it, and it's round. It's, it's very round. It's like a, like a ball. If you look at the whole thing, it's. It's mm-hmm. round in every direction. Uh, okay, so, <clears throat> um, all right. So, what are some other? And I can't believe I'm using this term. Exciting lettuces. Well, some of the more exciting lettuces are arugula, which in England we call rocket, um, which I think is a much more exciting name, actually, rocket, myself. Yes. But, but it's anyway. not spelled. It's not spelled like the like the spaceship rocket. Uh huh. Yeah. Is it? I thought it was. Yeah. I, I thought it was spelled differently. Okay, it is though. Well, you know, you, Americans don't know how to spell right, but in England, <laughs> it's spelled R O C K E T. Oh, okay. Then never mind. Okay. Uh, so rocket or arugula? Arugula. Now, there's a there's an interesting thing about arugula is it isn't just like a, a plain flavor. Like it's got, it's almost spicy in right. its in its flavor. Right. Right. But it's also exciting to look at, but it does have it is it, it's got a delicious peppery taste. So that's one of the things that makes it exciting. Because you you know, you, you get a place of, of green leaves for a salad and all of a sudden and you're, you know, eating green leaves and then all of a sudden you come upon this little pop of delicious pepperiness. That's rocket or arugula. I think, yeah, pepperiness is kind of a, a good way to describe it for sure. Um, the first time I had arugula was not intentional, by the way. Let's get that out. Let's let's make sure we've established that. Um, <clears throat> it was completely on accident, and I was like, "Holy crap! This is a, this is a this is a plant that has a f- peppery taste to it." Right there, you go. You see, lettuce excitement. You've experienced it. 
I, 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 I would not call it Back that. out of that one. <laughs> I, I wouldn't call it excitement. It was more like, oh, okay. But, you know, we were just listening to how excited you were when you first tried it. We heard. It's all there on tape. <laughs> I don't think it was excitement. I was just describing something. Uh, all right, so so Rocket or Arugula, what else? And and Rocket is kind of, the leaves are like three to four inches tall and kind of very wibbly-wobbly. It's not really a broad leaf. It's just a messy, bits all over the place leaf. <laughs> Say that again, wibbly-wobbly. It's all over the place leaf. It's not like, you know, Romaine, which is just like this shape. It's just all bar. Right. It's um, less, it's more chaotic. More chaotic. Yes. It's chaotic lettuce. Okay. Four inch tall chaotic lettuce. Uh, Um, And what was that again? What was that kind again? Rocket. Or arugula. Oh, I, I thought, I'm sorry. I thought we moved on to a different kind. I thought we were. We talking. are just about to. Oh, so when I said I what, was just explaining what a piece oh, of arugula looked like. Oh, okay. I, mis- I misunderstood. So you may identify it when you go to the store oh, looking okay. for exciting lettuce. Now you know it exists. Um, radicchio. Or radicchio, depending on where you're from. Is exciting, not oh, so much because of its taste. Only because, because it's red. It, looks it's red it's kind of two-tone burgundy ness so it can add it can make your salads look a lot more exciting than a pile of shredded romaine right and it can also um not because salads are boring and, <laughs> and that's just the way well, this is the whole point is that that radicchio can help you make your salads exciting so uh it's also uh, radicchio also is known as uh, red chicory, if I believe, if I remember correctly, or red leaf chicory, or something, like that, or even Italian. Something like, sometimes it's called Italian chicory. Is that right? Do you know? Uh, chicory, yes. Okay. Chicoria. Chicoria. Is Italian for chicory. Okay, so um, it's uh, it's got a really nice pop. Fl- it's a deep dark maroon, red purple color to it, and it's white. So if you if you're a fan of of like a a university or a sportsing sportsing team that is maroon and white. This is this is the lettuce for you. I'm just going to say that. And it's also it's a very sturdy. The leaves are typically smaller, but very sturdy. It's more almost more cabbagey. It's kind of down that end of things. Right, which I'm. A it's big... not soft and wistful like butter lettuce. <laughs> it's kind of sturdy and uh, soft and wistful. Um, I, I'm a big so this is this is how weird I am about stuff. I'm a huge big fan of cabbage. I can't stand lettuce, but I'm a huge big fan of cabbage. And it's just the way it is. And people are just gonna have to deal with that. Sorry. Sorry. Um Okay, what else? Then we have branching out a bit, we have the things like spinach. Mm-hmm. Which a lot of people kind of so in England, before I left, I had never seen raw spinach. I thought spinach came in a frozen rectangular block because that's the only way I'd ever seen spinach. And oh. I hate spinach. Hate it. So then I move here and in Spokane, they did have iceberg, but they also had these sort of little round leaves with long stalks. And so I would eat that and that was all good. And then one day I realized that that was spinach. That was like spinach in the raw, which I'd never seen in England. So, and then I realized that I actually loved spinach as long as it wasn't cooked. Because for me, cooking spinach does really weird things to it it makes it slimy and bleh. old yeah. sockish okay so everyone knows everyone who knows the the character popeye is familiar with spinach in a can and most people um <clears throat> most people associate spinach with that especially from their youth but it's not like that if you if you eat it in a different way because that's basically boiled down and stuffed in a can and you know kind of gross but spinach by itself like on the leaf 
is a totally different scenario. It is completely different. And so I came here and was eating this leafy thing that I didn't know it was. And then I figured out it was spinach. And then I was like, wow, I actually love raw spinach. And spinach is very, very common in salads over here. Um, I highly recommend it. Spinach is fantastically nutritious and um, it goes well with all sorts of things. Makes a really great salad, either just a pile of spinach with other things or mixed as part of your, with your rocket and radicchio and butter lettuce and all your other exciting lettuces. Um, that makes a great salad. However, you can also cook spinach. Not something that, I mean, I literally hated spinach. There was three things in the world that I hated to eat when I was growing up. Spinach was one of them. And my mother used to force feed me spinach, literally. I was not allowed to leave, even though she knew I hated it, she would give it to me and I was not allowed to leave the table until all the spinach was gone. And sometimes I'd be sitting at that table for like four hours until I could choke that stuff down. Anyway, so then I moved here and I was invited to one of the top steakhouses in Seattle for lunch for a taste test thing. And I went and I noticed that on the menu they had creamed spinach. And I don't know what was wrong with me that day, but um, I asked if I could try their creamed spinach. And I took one forkful of the creamed spinach and they took everything else away and said, I just want a big trough of your cream spinach. And that's all I want. Thank you. And that kind of changed everything because the cream spinach was delicious. And so I went home and started scouring books and um, things. Yes, books, because it wasn't really terribly internet-y at that point. And, <laughs> Wait, um, so, so – <laughs> Now you've set now you've set up a, a dichotomy between books and internet. Like they can't they can't like exist co, like commingle. Like there's one or the other. That's it. Now, if you're internety, you can't be booky, and if you're booky, you can't. Well, be Well, internet-y. no, but back then there was, and because remember, I was living in Spokane. I wasn't in a big city. I was well, in Spokane. Well, that, that's just and Spokane. They literally, like they're just like email. What's email? I'm like, seriously? Yeah, that's Spokane. What, what, wait, what? So I didn't go – my point was I didn't go on the internet and search for recipes. I went to my stash of British cookbooks that I had lugged over the ocean with me and found a recipe for cream spinach. And and I was trying to recreate this bowl of glorious thing that I'd had at, at the restaurant, and I did. And now cream spinach is one of my favorite things. However, I only eat cooked spinach if you add, you know, like a gallon of cream and some eggs and some bacon and other bits for it. Okay, so creamed spinach, uh, for folks who don't know, what is it? Is is it essentially just cream and spinach or are there seasonings? What's a standard cream spinach like? What's in it? Um, I Well, standard. Let me look because I've got my book here because I, I developed a cream spinach recipe, but particularly for – and it's actually, if any of you have keto clarity, my cream spinach recipe is – is uh, Jimmy asked me to, to give him a recipe for that. So my cream spinach recipe is it actually in keto clarity. I think a lot of you have that book. Then you can go and see my cream spinach recipe um, in there. Okay. Keto Clarity. I'm sure that a lot of the audience uh, has heard of this and has read this book and has it on hand and can easily grab that book and find that recipe. Right. In fact, that's the first time. Can I, can I share a story? Can I share a, um, a Carrie Brown story? The first time I ever heard the name Carrie Brown was reading Keto Clarity. And... Uh, I was like, hey, that's Carrie Brown. I should talk to her because I have a podcast now. And that wasn't the first time I read the book. That was just after I realized, oh, okay, these people know what they're talking about. So now you're – I'm trying to fill dead air while <clears throat> while Carrie Brown does like her Indiana Jones research in a library with the dusty books and stuff. So um, here's me juggling. Oh, wait, hold on. I've got sound effects. Hang on. Let's do some of those. Hang on. Let's see. Um, 
No, oh. Yeah, that should be longer, I think. Uh, I've got Have this you one. Finished? Oh, sorry, you're back. Hey, what's going on, Carrie Brown? Did you? I was never gone. Oh, okay. Well, fantastic. <laughs> you crazy man. <laughs> Uh, so you were reminiscing about I, spying my name in keto character. I Stop saw it. you in the book. I saw your name in the book, and I was like, "Hey, uh, did you see my recipe and go nom 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 cream spinach? I'm going to go make that right now." I feel like I'm supposed to say yes, but I don't. Uh-huh. Want... <laughs> then, uh-huh. then yes. Oh, I so need to talk to your wife. Um, <laughs> me too. If you see her, let me let, let her know that I want to talk to her. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> back to lettuce. So my point about that was that you can cook lettuce. You do lettuce is not just a salad thing. You can eat it hot. Cream spinach is my absolute favorite way to to eat cooked spinach. How does that differ from a spinach dip? completely different okay we'll just leave it at that we oh we can do a uh, an episode on the different spinaches varieties in the meantime there is a spinach since we're talking about recipes in books um my cream spinach is in keto clarity i have a spinach dip in the holiday keto I the know. Holiday cookbook I read that it. i made just before Thanksgiving for all you lovely people so that you could eat delicious food at the holidays and actually eat better food than all your carby friends and family. Right. So that's where you can find that spinach dip. Um, The other thing is, and I was reminded of this because I've had a flurry of correspondence about um, lettuce soup. Because in my sides cookbook, which is all about vegetables, um, but there's a lot of fat thrown in there as well. Yum, yum. (laughs) Because vegetables taste better with fat. Um, Also, they taste better. There is a recipe for lettuce soup. And I know a lot of people have gone, wait, what? Yeah, I did. You you cook romaine lettuce. Are you kidding me? That just sounds disgusting and blah, 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 blah. And so that came about because I'm like – well, if spinach is that great made into cream spinach, what, why, if I can cook spinach, why can't I cook lettuce? So, and I had an abundance of romaine lettuce in my fridge for reasons I now don't recall. And so I decided to make lettuce soup. And I've, I, I think it's because it's winter and, and because a lot of people have been buying the soup book and my, my soup cookbook. And so I've had a flurry of mail and, and IMs and Facebook posts saying uh, we tried it because we had a bunch of romaine. We had no hope for this soup, but it was delicious. And my husband now wants this every week. And da, 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 da. anyway, there's, so there's been a lot of excitement about my lettuce soup. And so I just wanted to share that there don't think that lettuce has to remain a cold, <laughs> crispy, refrigerated the pun. staple. You just pun. You can eat lettuce hot. Did you get? You catch the pun? Lettuce does not have to remain. Get it? Romaine. <laughs> You've made quite the funny. <laughs> yes. No? Yes? All right. Focus, Brian. Oh, hold Focus. on, hold on. I missed an opportunity. Hold on. Remain. <laughs> Hey, I used it. <laughs> Classic Brian. All right, so we've decided. Hot lettuce. Hot. Don't dismiss it. <clears throat> lettuce soup is delicious. Let us not dismiss hot lettuce. So. <laughs> yeah, you guys should see the indignation on Gary's face right now. Uh, she's regretting a lot of life choices, and I'm just I'm sh- I'm, I'm relaying Only that to you. Only one at this point. <laughs> <clears throat> Which one? I wonder. Yeah. Uh huh. Romaine. <laughs> so romaine lettuce in England is called cos lettuce. C O S. Really? Cos. Cos lettuce. I did not know that. Hmm? 
What? So, um, and it's that tall, you get walk in Costco and there's just like fields of the stuff, six squished into one bag and you take it home and you cut it up and it fills up the entire kitchen and it lasts for 300 years. <laughs> so that's what I'm talking about. Now, co- uh, Romaine cost lettuce is very, it also makes a very good transporter for other things sturdy things when, like right but you don't when you're not cutting it up right you leave it as a boat like you take you right you take the whole right. leaf if, if, if pre-cut it makes a very good transporter it's you know sturdy enough to hold ground beef if it's, you want yeah. to use it as a taco shell or you know very, or me my favorite thing to do with uh, romaine lettuce is get slices of smoked salmon and this is i'm talking about locks now so in England, smoked salmon. In America, lox, that kind of thin smoked stuff, not the American wedges that have been done in a smoker. That's not what I mean. The the lox and cream cheese, like spread cream cheese in the bottom of that, that romaine lettuce leaf and, and lay some smoked salmon lox in there and roll it up. And I at that's a meal and I'm happy as a clam. It's my favorite thing to do with with romaine as a transporter lox um cream cheese and lettuce right is that yes. what you said did i miss anything else no pepper no nothing well pepper ground pepper's good <clears throat> but sometimes i do, you know that's too much work <laughs> the going through all that that's not too much work but just throwing some pepper on there yeah the that's, pepper. Yeah, it's the it's the, the, yeah. the whole twisty action. yeah it's too yeah, much it's too much it's work too much. i got you Okay. It wouldn't on its own, but by the time I've done the spreading <laughs> and the laying, and the, the, then it's too much work. All right. I, I see the logic. I'm with you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So what else? So that's my favorite thing to do with – what have you used romaine lettuce boats for? Honestly, I, it's a primarily – if I if I use romaine, it's because there's loose ground beef of some kind that has to be transported in some way, and it's too hot to just hold in my hand because um, I'll just scoop it out of the pan in my hand and just – eat it caveman style right there in the middle of the kitchen but otherwise i just put it in a lettuce i'm i'm as you well know i am very very boring when it comes to that sort of stuff i don't even flavor i, I don't even flavor the reminder garbage. why i exist <clears throat> right you are the you are the opposite of that um what oh 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 oh, oh, oh. what one thing i do do that i do enjoy is taking sliced brisket and putting, I don't know, three or four different kinds of cheese, melt it down, then throw that on top of uh, the romaine and eating it. It's like, it's, so it's like, a, it's like a brisket fajito, ta- fajita taco. Also, <clears throat> what I'll do is take a mixture of um, shredded gouda or gouda. You said gouda. Gouda. Right. Um, uh, Asiago, uh, mozzarella, and maybe Swiss, depending on, on what, what I'm feeling. Melt that down into a flat piece of something. Just basically melt that down to a, a tortilla shape, and put and uh, when it's hot, put it in the middle of a of a um, of a romaine lettuce boat, and let it kind of cool down that way. And then put stuff on there, and I'll just eat it that way. So, but other See? Than, other than that, no. lettuce is awesome. Oh, you know what else I've done? Now that you've got me thinking about it. Is I take sardines and I'll open, I'll like open a can of sardines and I'll just lay the sardines out in the romaine and eat them that way. So that's that's another thing that I've done. Salt. Salt. Yeah, salt. That right. Oh no 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 no. Sardines so much better with a sprinkling of oh, pink no, no. and salt. They've already got salt on them. I, oh, so good, so good. Yeah, yeah. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. I growed up. Li- hey. I growed up watch uh, eating sardines. Me too. Um, <clears throat> on 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 that thing I can't say anymore. I because you have a speech impediment. <laughs> no, be, because because this is a keto podcast. Oh right, never mind then. Never mind. <laughs> Moving on. Not lettuce. So there's another exciting lettuce which I like a lot, and it's called various names. Um, it's often called frisé. Uh-huh. F R I S E E. And the and the first A e has an accent argu on it. It does. <clears throat> or it could be called some people call it chicory, some people call it endive, but it's very, very curly. It's very frothy, fluffy, like kind of lacy kind of look. It almost doesn't it's look very like, exciting. It doesn't look like a lettuce. It looks like someone took lettuce and ran it through a paper shredder. That's that's what it looks like. 
Yeah, it's just it's just very it's like a bunch of lace. It's all frothy and frilly and and it's lovely and it 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 looks very very pretty. And it's also it's more it's kind of in the middle. It's not as kind of sturdy as Radicchio or Romaine, but it's not soft either. It's kind of it's got quite a firm stalk, but the leaves are very Well, it it will sticky. wilt if you heat it up. It it will wilt pretty quick because it's it is not made of stern stuff because it's yeah. it is pretty frail but it you know if you're not heating it up it's fine but it will wilt if you if you heat it up too much but it can, it can make a, a salad look incredibly attractive and as we all know we eat with our eyes and Wait, so anything <clears throat> anything that makes salad look better and more appetizing is a good thing yeah also meat meat is a good thing uh, <laughs> so those are two things that are basically working to the same end. And then there's little lettuces, um, like watercress. Cress. I don't see cress much here. Mm. You have cress here? Yes. Yes. Okay. I, I don't see. Maybe you, that's because I'm in Seattle. I don't know. But, but, but we, we eat a lot of cress. We, we like egg and cress. I would be surprised if you find it in the, like, in the bulk produce section as opposed to like the herb section. Right. So th that may be where, I don't know. I, I don't know much about the difference in terms of categorizations. And it is more like a kind of, a, it's more like a bean sprout kind of thing yeah. rather than a, it's more like a sprout. But cress, we eat a lot of cress in England and that's quite, it's not peppery, but it's got a bit of a bite to it. So we like that. Watercress is another thing you can add. Um Iceberg, we've already determined you should not eat because it has no value to man nor beast. And then Swiss chard, things like that. Um, you can get really weird. I'm sure you can find nettle if you really oh, want to, yeah, but, but you I've don't. never. Don't. Just don't. Just I, I've don't. never gone there. So Look, I, me... I did roll down a bank of nettles when <laughs> I was about seven and it was the middle of summer in england and i had a little tank top and a pair of shorts on like you do when you're seven and i rolled down an entire bank that was just a sea of nettles and spent the next week standing on a stool in my mother's kitchen being dabbed with calamine lotion being all over denettled de uh, I, I mean all over it yeah. was just like if you can imagine being having all your entire body, apart from a tank top and wet little shorts, was the only bit of me that didn't have a nettle. Right. So I was going to say bite, but they don't bite. No, a nettle. They sting. Yeah. Sting. So on me, I was just this like red, lumpy, bawling mass of seven-year-old, and it was a very unpleasant experience. Uh, so that's probably why I've never wanted to eat one. Well, so I would just. I'd like to piggyback on that a little bit and say the only time you should be eating nettles is if you're in a survival situation and that's the only thing available to you. Um, you can make a soup out of them. It's not great, but otherwise there's no reason to be messing with that stuff at all. Yeah. It's just not worth it. So they're there. I maybe one day I will want to figure out what to do with them. But in the meantime, no, Right. And then there's kind of the lastly, there's just kind of the kind of the lettuce cabbage crossover, which would be your bok choy, which is, you know. Okay, hold on. I have a question for you. I have a question. It's for technically you. a cabbage. Okay, that's what. Brassica, that was my question. That was my question. I didn't think it was a lettuce. I, I was going to be surprised. It, it's not. It's kind of a. But it's if you've kind of ever eaten one or looked at one, it's it's kind of a halfway it house. It no, technically it, is a brassica, but. It literally looks like it's confused. Like it's trying to yeah, pretend to be right. one or the other. Like whatever right. you think it is, it looks like it's trying to be the other. Right. Yeah. So just to clarify, it is a brassica. And when we do the cabbage episode, we'll talk about that then. Right. Okay. Brian's like, oh, oh dear God. No, no. No, I like the episode. No, I like the cabbage episode. I'm down with cabbage. I can, <laughs> I'm good with cabbage. I it's just, it's just the lettuce. Bluck. Blah. So the right. point of this of of this show was is go out and get some exciting lettuce. You ju <clears throat> just don't stick with the romaine. Go, you can uh, different tastes, different textures, and a lot of people struggle because they feel like a lot of stuff is missing and they want more variety on keto. 
and this is a great way to get more variety. Yeah. So I, and I also, for me personally, I feel everything. You can take this however you like. Everything feels like it works better when I eat some vegetables. So I, yeah. I tend to, I probably eat more vegetables than than some people on keto. I just feel better when I do, and lettuce is a big part of that for me. So, and and if you are keto and you like vegetables, the lettuces are awesome because they're super high nutritionally, except iceberg, and um, a lot of fiber, and they don't take up much room. You know, they don't make you full. So, you know, but they can make your food look a lot more attractive, and they can introduce some new flavors and some new textures, which will generally make your keto meals more exciting. And I'm all for that. Right. It's always good to have exciting exciting lettuce food <laughs> right and uh, they also make great transporters for the meat and cheese we all love so yes, much they make great they make- wraps for stuff so if you can wrap your food in it if you can wrap your food in lettuce you can eat the lettuce so there you go and um lettuce is becoming so red robin which is people often ask fast food places red, red robin, robin yum lost. but <laughs> They do fantastic lettuce wrap burgers. Just any burger they do, they will do in lettuce for you. Um, and it's not fantastically exciting lettuce, but it it means that you get. I mean, it's like a burger. I mean, I just I I get all the burger joy, but without any of the carbs. Just eating it in lettuce, even though the lettuce isn't the most exciting of the lettuce family burger joy the other thing i would suggest was that um and brian mentioned this earlier that the different lettuces all have different nutritional profiles as you would expect so rotate just try new ones don't eat the same ones all the time just rotate you'll get a you'll get a bigger diversity of uh, micronutrients and that's good and then cream spinach is in Keto Clarity. The lettuce soup is in my soup cookbook. And I've had rave reviews about my lettuce soup and emails to that effect, which was very nice. And the spinach uh, dip is in the Holiday Keto book. And the spinach dip is in the Holiday Keto book. Okay, so uh, there you go. Go out. No lettuce! Right, so go out to the grocery store or your produce people and ignore the iceberg. Try some other stuff. Okay, so yes. you know what that means. You know what time it is now, then. What time is it? Motivation Monday. Motivation Monday. Okay, so this is what we're going to be talking about today. Motivation Monday is, for today, is you can't start the next chapter of your life if you keep rereading the last one. You can't start the next chapter... If you keep rereading the last one. All right, go. All right, there we go. That's enough. (laughs) All right, so here's the point of what what we were trying to get across. All right, so you cannot, you cannot, uh, you you cannot slow the progress of time. It's going to happen. And you can either be along for the ride or you can be constantly clinging to the past in some desperate hope that some way in shape in your mind, you're be, you're going to be able to change the past. You can't, right? What you have is right now. And what you do right now is going to shape what you, what happens to your future, right? So, so if you think about it, you, you are able to shape your past by focusing on right now where you want to be in the future. So you can't start anything. If you have continuously and regularly hung on to the stuff that's happened to you prior to now, so it's important that you let that go. It has happened. You can't do anything to change it. And focus on what you can do right now, what you can do today, what you can do this week to uh, to basically write that next chapter or to start that next chapter in your life instead of constantly clinging to and hoping for stuff that you can't control is the whole point of that. All right. And I, th- I think that's the key. And I'm sorry that for the silence earlier, I was I was having a problem switching my brain from lettuce to um, two books. So I, I kind of got stuck there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any trouble at all because I was like, OK, we're done talking about lettuce. There yeah, no, I, I was still thinking about about giving up Romaine and moving towards exciting lettuces, and I ju- and then you asked me, and I was just like, <laughs> I can't say that. And so anyway, sorry about that. Uh... 
<laughs> so you can't start the next lettuce in your life if you're holding on to the iceberg of the past. If you're convinced that the only lettuce on earth is romaine, then you're never going to experience the utter delights that are out there in the vast world of lettuce deliciousness. <laughs> But right. no, that wasn't what I was right. going to say. That's a good segue, um, but that's. <laughs> <laughs> but it is true. Right. It, it was. Ter- it's definitely true. <clears throat> uh, okay. So, so and I, I think going because I can't get my mind off food for some reason. So that pertains particularly to what we do in keto because keto is such a a, a change from how we used to eat that I think this pertains a lot to that is that it's going to, unless you can, you know, get rid of, you know, empty your cupboards, get rid of all the old stuff out, you know, make room for the new stuff. You've got to let go of what used to be in your food life in order to embrace all the goodness and, and the benefits that keto offers. Yeah. That's a good point. Um, so that's a practical application right, of right, that. Right. Um, it applies. I mean, and Brian's point was more, you know, kind of the emotional day to day stuff, but it does also apply to our our food. Right. Is you know, get rid of all the old stuff. Right. So that you can right. make room and and embrace the new stuff. If you keep trying to, you know, see how you can eat an odd bit of bread or, you know, not quite let go of it, right. you're really going to struggle to be successful in moving forward in a, in a keto lifestyle. Yeah. And, and that's, I mean, that that's just a universal truth. That's why it, that's why when you apply it to the different aspects of your life, it seems to ring true no matter where you throw it in there. Right. If you want to move forward, if you want to progress and if you want to, 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 there's a saying that if you keep doing what you always did, you're always going to get what you always got. And you got to change something. And the longer that you continue to do the same things, the results are always going to be the same. So if you want to progress, if you want to make change, if you want to improve, you've got to do something about that. You've got to do something to change that. And the, and the thing that you can do is right now today is no longer be controlled by what's happened in the past. Decide. You know, decide what's off limits, decide what's non-negotiable, and then just move forward with that decision. So it's important. Uh, it has practical application. And uh, we hope that um, you will take that this week, today and this week, and that that's what you'll work on is uh, making sure that all throughout, that's, what you, that's what's on the front of your mind is, you know, moving forward, not, not letting the past control you, either by food or by emotions or whatever. Always think about moving forward, always thinking about being successful. All right. Um, is that going to do it for the Motivation Monday, Kerry? We are duly and fully motivated. <laughs> All right. Then, then I have to end it. Hang on. We can't talk about motivating anyone anymore because the song has gone on. All right. So, okay. All right. So lettuce is important. If you like that sort of thing, try, <laughs> try some variety or, you know, or whatever. Um, but I but, spice things up, right? Uh, look, I we hear it all the time, and, th- and this is true. When Carrie said this, I was like, okay, yeah, that's a good point. Um, I didn't say it out loud; I said it in my head. Um, that we hear all the time: uh, variety, variety, variety. Well, you know, you can have variety within a within a a particular kind of food, right? So if you want a, div- a variety of different kinds of lettuce, you can do that, you know, and it does change things up a little bit. Um, so instead of eating the same thing over and over again, you can eat kind of you can have a salad still if you like salads. But just change the the underlying constituent parts, and that makes things. That's your variety right there. All right. So, Carrie, again, as always, I appreciate it, and uh, I guess we'll talk to You're you next welcome. week. All right, we'll talk to you next week. Bye. Bye. And. This has been another episode of Keto Evangelist Kitchen. Lettuces. Yeah. Go buy some. Try variety. For real, though, people complain about not having variety, but there's a lot of options out there. So unless you're willing to go experiment within a style, then, you know, you shouldn't be complaining. All right. You can connect with us on social media. On Twitter, we are Keto Van Kitchen. On Instagram, we are Keto Evangelist Kitchen. 
Facebook, we've got a really awesome group full of awesome keto people called Keto Evangelist Kitchen. Look us up. You'll find us. We'll show you what the secret handshake is when we let you in. Um, all right. This has been a great episode, as always. I hope that you guys also are motivated. I want you to be positive because we love you. Even you, Kevin. All right. Until next time. Keep being awesome, peoples. Powered by Ketones.